Folks, listen. May I have your attention, please? Attention, please. I can deal with the troubled friends with a wave of my hand, this very hand. Please observe me if you will. I'm Professor Harold Hill, and I'm here to organize a River City Boys band. Brrr. Oh, think, my friends, how can any pool table ever hope to compete with a gold trombone? Ra, 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 da, 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 ra, ra. Remember, my friends, what a handful of trumpet players did to the famous fabled walls of Jericho. Oh, billiard parlor walls come a-tumbling down. Well, a band will do it, my friends. Oh, yes, I said a boys' band. Do you hear me? I said River City got to have a boys' band, and I mean she needs it today. Well, Professor Harold Hill's on hand. River City's going to have her boys' band. As sure as the Lord made little green apples, and that band's going to be in uniform. Johnny, Willie, Teddy, Fred. And you see the glitter of crashing cymbals. And you hear the thunder of rolling drums and the shimmer of trumpets. Tom, ta -da! And you'll feel something akin to the electric thrill I once enjoyed when Gilmore... Pat Conway, the great creator, W.C. Handy, and John Philip Sousa all came to town on the very same historic day. Everett L. Bud Roberts provides us with the start of our story. At the turn of the 20th century, instrumental music in Florida consisted primarily of string bands and orchestras which accompanied the Chautauquas, Minstrels, and Medicine shows. The only wind bands were military bands, circus bands, and small community bands or town bands. College and universities had their origins in the normal schools and academies. By 1900, the East Florida Seminary in Ocala had a battalion band. Most college bands before 1910 were organized on an informal, voluntary basis as a recreational activity for students, or to provide music for military functions and were called cadet bands. From 1920 to 1930, the town bands became more and more popular. During this decade, several boys' bands were organized by individuals whose character was less than reputable. They would come to town and sell the community on the idea of keeping the boys out of trouble by organizing a boys' band, a la Meredith Wilson's The Music Man. I remember these days because I played in the Kissimmee Boys' Band from 1926 to 1931 under G. and Biddy Shearhouse. I also played in the Orlando Reporter Star News Boys' Band from 1928 to 1930. Bands became associated with schools in Florida in the 1920s. Their appearance in the schools was a result of several cultural and economic influences. Professional bands began touring the larger cities in Florida in the 1920s as a result of the tourism boom, as Harold Bachman recounted in an article published in the Music Director magazine in 1964. Shrewd promoters began to realize that the future of the Florida tourist industry depended not only on the relatively few wealthy socialites who could afford to patronize the exclusive hotels, but on the thousands of Americans of moderate means who could be attracted to Florida because of the winter climate, investment opportunities, and an interesting entertainment program. City officials and chambers of commerce vied with each other to offer attractions which would induce visitors from the snowbound north to come to sunny Florida for a winter vacation. Officials interested in the burgeoning tourist trade began to consider concerts by bands of professional musicians as a major attraction. As a result, professional bands such as Arthur Pryor's band, Merle Evans' band, Harold Bachman's Million Dollar Band, C. Gerlamonica's band, and Roy Smith's Scotch Highlanders made frequent appearances in Miami, Daytona Beach, Orlando, Tampa, and Sarasota. Some cities even built parks and band shells to house these events. The professional bands flourished until the Great Depression began in 1929. After the Depression, efforts were made to resume the touring concerts, but since many of the professional bands had disbanded, the later bands were comprised of part-time and local musicians. This decline in professional bands and the inception of talking movies forced many professional musicians to search for other ways to earn a living. It was a natural progression for some musicians to turn to starting bands in the schools, not only in Florida, but throughout America. School bands became important sources of entertainment for small communities in Florida, especially during the Depression. The first bands in Florida's schools were known as boys' bands, and many were brass bands. 
The band instrument industry supported the proliferation of school bands by providing instruments, method books, and instruction. Further motivation for the school band movement came with the creation of the National School Band Tournament in 1923. This was our first national band contest and was a motivating factor in raising performance standards. But mostly, communities wishing to start school bands had to rely on local expertise and such published materials as were available. The first Florida school to include band in its curriculum was Ocala High School. The Ocala High School band was organized by Mrs. Brown Greeton Cole during the winter of 1922. The prior music teacher, Marguerite Porter, had developed a strong studio program involving private lessons and instrumental and vocal music, but no organized instrumental ensembles. Brown Greeton Cole had had no previous teaching experience, but she was a noted cornet soloist and had taken professional training on cornet in Minneapolis and at the Chicago Conservatory. Mrs. Cole continued the instrumental instructions that Porter had started and organized those students into the first school band. She became one of the driving forces behind the school band movement in Florida and was responsible for establishing the first marching band contest in Florida. The Ocala band's rehearsals were in the front room of an abandoned schoolhouse on the school campus, now known as Ocala Forest High School. Heating was provided by wood stoves, which were tended by officers of the band. The band grew from its original 14 boys to 30 in a short time. It soon became a popular source of entertainment for the town, and a six-concert series was established on the Courthouse Square. Due to the importance of this entertainment, the Ocala Town Council budgeted $300 to supplement the band fund. The Ocala High School Band also became the state's first traveling band. An all-boy band with a female conductor was a unique attraction and its services were in demand throughout the state. Their appearance generated much interest in starting bands in the schools wherever they visited. Brown Greeton Cole retired in 1944 after 22 years of devoted service. She was known for performing her duties with great integrity and for being a sensitive musician who inspired young people. In 1944, the Florida Education Association designated Brown Greeton Cole as mother of the Florida band movement. In 1925, Eustis High School became the second school to establish band as part of its curriculum. This band was led by Captain James B. O'Neill and was the winner of the first official state band contest which was held in Lakeland in 1928. In addition to performing locally for civic events, the Eustis band traveled as far north as Michigan to promote Florida and school bands. While Captain O'Neill taught at Eustis High School for nine years, he continued to serve in the military reserve and was later promoted to the rank of major. He left Eustis to direct the struggling yet promising band at Fort Pierce High School. In 1926, the small town of Sebring incorporated band as a subject in its school curriculum and hired P.J. Gustav to be its school band director. This excerpt from the February 1973 music director gives us a glimpse of the band and its pioneering director. The Gustafs moved to Florida in the early 20s, and after some time of professional playing and starting a band at Punta Gorda, they moved to Sebring, where under the sponsorship of the Rotary Club, Mr. Gustat organized a band that soon became the Sebring High School Band. This band set standards that were unmatched by small schools during the first years of the early band programs. For example, in 1928, the school enrollment was only 168 students. However, the band performed and competed in Class A. The band received the highest ratings at all state and national festivals throughout Gustav's career. The band became part of the Sebring Cultural Series at the Municipal Pier Bandshell during this tourist season, beginning New Year's Day to April 1st of each year. Gustav, being the most experienced band director in Florida, served as a mentor to many of the young pioneering band directors, and thus the next name, affectionately known as Prof, was designated to him by many of his friends and colleagues. The Florida Bandmasters Association later designated the title of Father of Bands in the State of Florida to him. In 1927, two additional high school bands were created. John J. Haney organized the Ketterlinus High School Band in St. Augustine, and Johannes P. Koschelny started Tallahassee's Leon High School Band. The Ketterlinus Band grew out of the school's drum and bugle corps, which Haney had started earlier. Haney started a support group known as the Band Mothers Organization, which helped recruit students for the band. The following advertisement was placed in the St. Augustine Evening Record. Join the band. Music instruction. Instruments furnished if you do not have your own. Private lessons. 
Group rehearsals sponsored by the Band Mothers Organization. Price, $2 per month. John Haney was a member of the John Philip Sousa Band and he patterned his high school concert programs after those of the Sousa Band. The first of those concerts took place December 12, 1931 and included the following selections. In what was probably the first review of a high school band performance in Florida, the local paper declared, School band is well received at the Plaza Concert. The San Augustine High School Band played their first concert Saturday night in the Plaza. The audience gave the players enthusiastic applause. The marches and the popular numbers were especially well played and indicate what we may expect from these young people as they gain more experience. The band was so well received that Haney established a concert series that took place every Saturday evening in the City Plaza from February to May. With the death of John Philip Sousa in 1932, Haney's professional playing career ended. In order to attain a better paying full-time position, Haney moved to Bunnell to start the first band at Bunnell High School. Haney became a charter member of the FBA and went on to establish many other band programs in Florida. He had a significant influence on the growth and philosophical development of the school band movement. The Leon High School Band was originally organized as an adjunct to the Capital City Band of Tallahassee. Johannes P. Koscielny organized the band and participated in many civic performances in combination with the well-established Capital City Band. Like most of the early bands, the Leon High School Band was a result of local citizens working with school officials to provide a quality band for the community. Koscielny directed the band until 1939. Their larger schools were slower in establishing band programs in Florida. Miami Senior High was the first large school to include band in its curriculum, doing so in 1928. Mr. Otto Steinmetz was the first full-time band and orchestra director at Miami High. He remained there as director until 1936 and was followed in 1937 by Al G. Wright. Wright brought many innovations to the high school marching band, such as Swiss flag swinging, black light shows, and an expanded majorette corps. Wright eventually became the director of bands at Purdue University. H.B. Plant High School in Tampa was the second large school to incorporate band into its curriculum. Mrs. Hodgson organized the band in 1928, becoming the second woman to lead a school band program in Florida. She remained as the director on a part-time basis until 1933. The Clearwater Central High School established its band program in 1929 under the direction of Rocco Grella. Grella, born in Italy, was educated at the Music Conservatory in Naples, Italy, and went on to direct bands in the United States Navy, at Kentucky State University, and was the director of the Scarlet Scar Band in Naples. He remained an active band director in Florida until his retirement in 1946. Sarasota High School was the last school to organize a band in the 1920s. B.D. Sturgis developed the band program at Sarasota High in 1929, quickly expanding the band from its original 28 members to over 80 members. The Sarasota Band was one of the first school bands to move into its own professional rehearsal hall, with acoustically treated walls, riser seating, storage room, practice rooms, and a director's office. Sturgis was from Pennsylvania, receiving his formal education as a violinist. He was also director of the Sarasota Municipal Band and a charter member of the FBA. He remained at Sarasota High School until 1946. Although professional and community bands were in great demand in the larger cities until the Depression of 1929, it was the smaller communities who were quicker to organize and encourage the development of school band programs. As comprehensive music programs were established in these schools, they became integral parts of both school and community activities. All of the original Florida school bands were established at the high school level. The smaller communities supported the school bands and welcomed the performances given by these bands. It was not unusual for the early bands to establish weekly outdoor concert series, which included a different program for each performance. The next decade saw much growth in the number of school bands. 21 school bands were started between 1931 and 1936. The depression and the decline of the professional bands hastened the growth of bands in the schools. Directors were in great demand, and it was not uncommon for one band director to be employed in as many as three schools. The Works Project Administration, or WPA, 
created in 1935 by President Franklin D. Roosevelt, provided jobs for the unemployed, including professional musicians. Professional ensembles sponsored by the WPA visited schools throughout Florida, generating additional interest in school bands. The WPA also provided funds to pay for band director salaries in school districts that could not afford to hire directors. Many of the bands in the Panhandle area of the state were started in this manner. The WPA also contributed funds to support summer music camps and in-service projects at colleges and universities in Florida. Music contests were held in the 1920s to promote school music programs and to motivate the young musicians. Originally, the contest included choir, choral ensemble, orchestra, and instrumental solo divisions. Some of the earliest contests, including school bands in their formats, were sponsored by the Florida Federation of Music Clubs. The Federation had sponsored music contests in Jacksonville in 1926 and in West Palm Beach in 1927. Bud Roberts describes the very first band contest this way. I remember the first band contest held in Florida was in Lakeland on March 28, 1928. Mrs. Brown Greeton Cole of Ocala served as chairman of the music committee of the Florida Association of Music Clubs, whose convention was to be held in Lakeland. The emphasis this year was music in the public schools. Mrs. Cole sent letters to all school principals and superintendents, including the state superintendent, inviting them to the state tournament of bands to be held at the Lakeland Municipal Auditorium at 2 p.m. on March 28, 1928. Her letter would also let them know that talks would be heard concerning bands as a regular subject in the schools. The tournament of bands was recognized by NSBOVA as the original and official state band contest. I remember this contest because the Kissimmee Boys Band, of which I was a member, was participating. The city of Tampa also became active in supporting music contests. In 1927, one such contest was sponsored by a Tampa music store merchant, M.L. Price. Price used Harry Grant Sr., then a music teacher at Hillsborough High School, and his principal, Fred Spaulding, as consultants in organizing and running this early contest. The Tampa contest was based on a point system, which included the school's entire music program. Therefore, individual solos and ensembles, in addition to the chorus, orchestra, and band, contributed to the final score. Only two bands entered this contest, and Duval High School from Jacksonville was declared the overall winner. A conflict between the two contests was inevitable, since they were both vying for the participation of a very small number of bands. Two weeks before the 1928 Federation contest in Lakeland, Mrs. Brown Greeton Cole sent a letter to all parent-teacher organizations in Florida, asking for their support and participation in the contest. In the letter, she indicated that the National School Band Association had endorsed the Lakeland contest as the official state band contest and would be presenting the trophy to the winner. Her letter also included the following. This day, which will include the state school band tournament, will be a thrill from start to finish. No group of men or women interested in the education of our boys and girls can attend this convention without being convinced of the value of music in modern education. At 2 o'clock, the band tournament will take place in the Municipal Auditorium. At 5 o'clock, all of the bands competing will give a masked band concert in the park. Can you imagine anything more thrilling? The Lakeland contest was very successful and generated much support for band to be incorporated into the school curriculum. The Tampa contest was also very successful, even though most of the state's bands attended the Federation's contest in Lakeland. The 1928 Tampa Contest, known as the Florida High School Music Contest, attracted a large number of school music programs because of the incentives provided for them by the Tampa business community. Restaurants provided meals, businesses and local citizens provided transportation, and families opened their homes to the visiting music students. Newspaper reports indicated that 32 schools entered the contest. Hillsborough High from Tampa and Robert E. Lee High School from Jacksonville tied for the school championship. In 1929, the Tampa contest became known as the Florida High School Music Festival Association Contest, and most of the schools with bands shifted their support to it. Bud Roberts, who was in the Kissimmee Boys Band, recalls, From 1929 to 1936, the Tampa Junior Chamber of Commerce sponsored the Florida High School Music Festival Association Contest. I remember playing trumpet solos in a couple of these contests. We were housed in private homes. In 1932, there were five bands participating. 
Sebring, Eustis, Fort Pierce, Ocala, and Clearwater. But trouble soon emerged, and by 1935, band directors were unhappy with the absence of music teacher representation on the planning committees for the contest. A major concern of the band directors was that rules and music requirements for the Tampa contest were not consistent with national standards. Several bands who competed in the Tampa contest were not permitted to advance to the national contest sponsored by the National School Band Association due to these inconsistencies. Another concern was that the Tampa contest did not use the required music list, which was published by the National School Band Association. In fact, the Florida list contained only nine of the 34 selections found on the national list. In 1933, the first attempt at creating an all-state symphonic band occurred. This took place at the State Music Convention, but was met with less than enthusiastic support by the band directors, because the conductor clinician for the band, a Dr. Joseph E. Maddy, was also the orchestra conductor clinician. The band directors wanted to secure their own conductor, as opposed to sharing one with the orchestra. Proof that they could organize a band of extremely high quality also came in 1933 with the creation of an all-Florida boys band. This group was assembled to perform in the 1933 Chicago World's Fair. The band gained such wide recognition during its performances in Chicago and the concert tour that followed that a parade was held in Tallahassee in their honor. An Associated Press story gave the following account of the band's appearances in Chicago. Chicago, August 15th. The All Florida Boys Band closed its brief but brilliant engagement at the Century of Progress here with two concerts, which attracted immense audiences. The band is now leaving for home by way of Pittsburgh and Washington. The high quality of the programs of the Florida Band have attracted the managers of the Big Band Contest, sponsored by the Chicago Tribune, and the management of the exposition. They expressed their regret that a longer stay could not be made. Of special note, even though the band was billed as a boys band, one girl was included in the group. Madeline Bogle, an 18-year-old senior trumpet student from Sebring High School, was the state champion trumpet soloist for three consecutive years. Her virtuosity could not be denied. Band directors began to look for leadership among their own ranks, feeling more and more dissatisfied with the decisions being made by administrators and non-band personnel. Major changes were needed to address the challenges they were facing. By 1936, high school bands in Florida had made great progress in their performance levels and band directors were desiring more control of the state contest. The first discussion regarding the organization of a state association for band directors occurred at the 1936 state contest in Tampa. It was on the steps of the Thomas Jefferson Hotel that Major Ed Chinette, a band director from Miami, led the discussion. Those present in addition to Chinette were P.J. Gustav, Brown Greeton Cole, Major James B. O'Neill, Everett Roberts, John Haney, Ed Haney, B.D. Sturgis, and William Haney. Others were in attendance, but since no records were kept of this informal gathering, their names are not known. The discussion focused on three main topics. The need to create more interest in the school bands, the need to involve school personnel in the organizing or administering of the state contest, and the need for a unified band organization in Florida. In June of 1936, James Crowley wrote the following letter and sent it to all known band directors in Florida. June 9, 1936. To all bandmasters in the state of Florida. During the state high school band contests in Tampa this year, there was a meeting of several of the band directors of Florida in the Thomas Jefferson Hotel regarding the organization of a Florida Bandmasters Association. It is useless for me to attempt to discuss with you the importance of this kind of organization to the benefit of your work and mine. We all know that practically every state in our union has a bandmasters association except Florida. Surely not all are out of step except Florida. I am inclined to believe that we are out of step so far as progressive band music is concerned. We should be better organized so as to promote things in the way of band music in a bigger and better way. Our state band contest should be held in exact accordance with the national requirements. The Tampa Music Festival is a very excellent affair, but as so far as bands are concerned, we all know that it can be improved. 
I am sure that if such an organization, as we are planning, should make recommendations to the festival, that our most exacting plans will be carried out. I have taken the liberty of calling together all bandmasters in Florida. Mr. Ed Chinette, head of the band clinic to be held in Gainesville, in connection with the university, has invited the organization to meet there during the clinic. I believe this is an excellent plan. We can all go to Gainesville and get first-hand information as to what Mr. Jeanette and his co-workers are doing in the band field here in Florida. I am asking Mr. Jeanette to set the time of day for the meeting and the place in Gainesville. We will notify you in just a few days. I am taking the liberty of calling the meeting on Monday, July 6th. Someone has to take this initial decision, and I hope that it will meet with your approval. I hope that you will make your plans to attend this meeting. We earnestly desire to organize every possible band leader to give their ideas for consideration. Let us ask Mr. Ed Jeanette to preside over the organization to get it started. Mr. Jeanette has had a great amount of valuable band experience and can help us in the organization. Better school bands for Florida. The band clinic, which was the first in-service band program in Florida, took place in Gainesville from June 17th to July 8th, 1936 and was held at the P.K. Young Laboratory School on the campus of the University of Florida. Those assisting Ed Chinette with the clinic were Brown Greeton Cole, P.J. Gustat, John J. Haney, Major Cesar LaMonica, Major Everett Allen Moses, and Major James B. O'Neill. The clinic involved high school band students as well as band directors. The clinic provided the students with group instruction at no cost. They provided only their transportation and meals. The students formed the first all-Florida band, spending their rehearsal time serving as a true clinic band, rehearsing music from the NSBA required music list, but giving no public concerts. The first meeting of the Florida Bandmasters Association was held on Saturday afternoon, July 6, 1936. The first order of business was to elect officers. They were President Ed Jeanette from Miami Beach, Vice President Brown Greeton Cole from Ocala, and Secretary Treasurer James W. Crowley from Fort Pierce. The President appointed a temporary executive board consisting of Edward Haney, James B. O'Neill, R.V. Robinson, Thelma Crowley, Everett L. Roberts, and King Cole. Other items of business addressed during the first FBA meeting included the deceitful practices of some band instrument dealers who sold instruments without providing qualified instruction and the desire to seek bids from cities which might like to host the 1937 state band contest. Soon after the Gainesville Band Clinic concluded, the executive board decided that another band clinic would be held at Sebring High School on November 27th and 28th, 1936, with P.J. Gustat serving as the clinician. The November clinic meeting in Sebring marked the first official FBA meeting held during the regular school year. It also incorporated clinic sessions which included topics such as performance standards, rehearsal techniques, selected contest literature, and basic instrumentation. It also included a meeting to discuss the first official FBA state band contest, which would take place in 1937. It would be administered by Florida band directors using the rules of the National Band Directors Association. Attending this meeting was Henry Fillmore, a close friend of John J. Haney. Fillmore would go on to influence the standards and leaders of the FBA for the next 20 years. The first FBA Bulletin of 1937 contained the following information from Secretary Crowley regarding the state band contest. The band and orchestra contest for Florida in 1937 will be held at West Palm Beach on March 8th and 9th. It is being held in connection with the Sundance Festival there and sponsored by the West Palm Beach Recreation Commission with MacArthur C. Black as secretary of the sponsoring association. Arrangements have already been made for putting on the contest properly. Necessary auditoriums for all events are arranged for. The $1,000 necessary for the maintenance and management of the association and the payment of judges of national reputation and the plaques, certificates, printing, etc. has been put up for the band association. Hotel facilities are available at prices not exceeding 75 cents per person per day and meals not exceeding one dollar per day. With such facilities at our command, we see no reason why this should not be Florida's biggest musical event in history. The contest had 17 bands entered, easily surpassing the former highest total of 12. However, the absence of Tampa school bands indicated that the music festival in Tampa was still a problem to be solved. The leaders of FBA made efforts to work with Tampa festival administrators 
but it was soon determined that the NSBA would need to take a stand as to which contest would get to send representative bands to the national contest. The following excerpt from a letter from the NSBA president, A.R. McAllister, defined the stature of both contests. The National School Band Association designates the contest held by the Florida Bandmasters Association, which this year will be held in West Palm Beach, March 8th and 9th, as the official Florida State Contest, its winners to be eligible on a regular quota basis to the national contest. The contest conducted at Tampa University will be recognized as a District of the State Contest, provided it's conducted under national rules and under the supervision of the officers of the Florida Bandmasters Association. An important philosophical foundation was laid with the planning of the first FBA state contest. It was promoted first and foremost as an educational event. Ratings and awards were not to be the focus. Comments from expert musicians and adjudicators and hearing other bands were the motivating factors for bands to attend. The judges for the first FBA contest were Colonel Earl Irons from North Texas A&M University, Clayton Chenette from Ames, Iowa, August Ingley from the University of Tampa, Lewis Marvin from Stetson University, and Charles Staltman from the University of Miami. An FBA meeting was held as part of the state contest, and at that meeting, it was determined that FBA membership dues would be established. Membership was to be open to any interested person for the annual sum of one dollar. Sixty cents of each membership went to a subscription for the School Musician magazine. Another precedent that was set as the first contest was the use of ratings instead of points or places. Three ratings were used. First Division, Superior, Second Division, Good, and Third Division, Fair. Those receiving First Division ratings were designated as co-champions. Directors whose bands received the First Division ratings were admonished to avoid declaring themselves in the media as state champions. In a somewhat contradictory manner, however, a sweepstakes cup was established for the band that earned the highest number of points based on the combined ratings received by the band and the solo and ensemble events. Points were awarded as follows. First Division, 15 points. Second Division, 10 points. Third Division, 5 points. Using this format, the Sebring High School Band, under the direction of P.J. Gustav, won the first FBA sweepstakes cup. Band directors at school in the Florida Panhandle were somewhat removed from the rest of the state because of geographical distance. In 1935, they became organized into an association as a result of the Professional and Service Division of the Florida Works Progress Administration, or WPA. Known as the West Florida Division of the National School Bandmasters Association, they participated in festivals presented by the West Florida Festival Commission. In 1937, the West Florida Division was incorporated into the FBA and became the Northwest District. The district festival in the Northwest District was still being administered by the WPA program, and as a result, some serious conflicts involving the rating system emerged. The FBA, in order to comply with national rules, switched to the five-division rating system that we use today. But the Northwest District Festival was still using the older three-division system. As a result, many bands were disqualified from attending the regional and national contests. It was not until 1939 that the Northwest District conformed to the FBA-NSBA festival policies. By 1938, the FBA had established itself as the primary state band organization, having withstood several challenges from outside organizations and individuals. During these formative years, John J. Haney emerged as a strong leader and influential educator. The 1939 FBA State Band Festival reflected the growth and progress that Florida bands had achieved over the past few years. A formidable slate of nationally recognized adjudicators was hired, including Carl King, composer, conductor, and president of the American Bandmasters Association, Glenn C. Bainham, director of bands at Northwestern University, Henry Fillmore, conductor, composer, and publisher, Clay W. Chinette, director of bands at Iowa State College. It should be noted that the FBA State Festival included marching band drill shows and solo and ensemble events. The state adjudicators were expected to judge in each of these three areas of the festival, and it was no different in 1939. 
This festival marked the first time that school bands in Florida were evaluated by adjudicators who resided outside of the state. Over 1,636 students representing 30 schools participated in the festival that year. Contributing to the success of the 1939 State Festival, the Northwest District held its first FBA festival, which included 19 bands from Pensacola to Lake City. 1939 also marked the year in which the Florida Bandmasters Association adopted its first bylaws. The 1940 State Band Festival was held in Miami. 36 bands involving 2,096 students participated in that festival. Adjudicators included Clayt Chenette from Ames, Iowa, Henry Fillmore from Miami, Peter Byes from Hagerstown, Maryland, Glenn Cliff Bainham from Evanston, Illinois, and Earl Slocum from Greensboro, North Carolina. It was at this state festival that the Mast Band Spectacular was added at the conclusion of the marching drill show portion. All participating bands would combine and each adjudicator would conduct a piece with the combined forces. It is interesting to note that in these early years of the FBA, school enrollment did not determine the classification of the band at festival, but rather the difficulty of the music selected from a required list. For example, the Lake Wales High School Band, under the direction of Harry Grant Jr., had 37 members in its band from a total school population of 39. And yet the Lake Wales Band played in the B classification during those years. In 1941, the FBA Festival was held in conjunction with the Festival of the States in St. Petersburg. This joint effort proved to be successful in providing a larger audience for the band performances. The city donated funds to help with festival expenses and furnished housing and meals at rates of less than a dollar per day per student. Forty-one bands participated in the festival and were evaluated by an impressive panel of adjudicators. Clayt Chenette, Henry Fillmore, Glenn Cliff Bainham, Colonel Earl D. Irons, Harold Bachman, and William D. Ravelli. As the Florida Bandmasters worked to promote their fledgling band programs and organize themselves into a professional association in the late 1930s and early 1940s, a wonderful bit of fate occurred. Henry Fillmore, noted conductor and composer, began visiting Florida in the early 30s to vacation and visit his dear friend John Haney. Fillmore quickly became fond of Florida and its struggling band programs. By 1938, Fillmore and his wife had made the decision to move to Miami. After he moved to Florida, he virtually adopted Florida's school and college bands. He never refused an invitation to appear as a guest conductor, and many bandmasters came to him for counsel and advice. He was the acknowledged host to all who came to the state to judge contests, present clinics, and conduct festivals. Records indicate that, on occasion, he even advanced money to those who needed help in covering the expense of district contests. His love and enthusiasms for bands everywhere generosity to band students and directors were legendary. Few bands visited the Miami area without being greeted by Uncle Henry. Parties at his home for Florida bandmasters and visiting band directors were memorable and full of Fillmore anecdotes. Fillmore was a perceptive and thoughtful judge. Perhaps it was because he heard things through the critical ears of a composer as well as a conductor. Although he was personal friends with many of the Florida band directors, he was believed to play no favorites and was known for his integrity. After each contest, it was his practice to take all the judges out to dinner at his own expense. His friendship with John Haney strengthened as they worked together in the state. He told Haney that he wanted to do something to help start new bands throughout Florida. In an effort to hasten the progress of bands, Fillmore began conducting concerts without charging an honorarium. He coined the phrase, every kid loves a band suggesting that all one needed was the opportunity to participate. He recognized that some small towns sometimes had better bands than those in the big cities, because the kids worked harder at it and there were fewer competing activities. Research indicates that Fillmore and Haney were responsible for starting 32 school bands in the central and northwestern regions of Florida between 1939 and 1942. Another of Fillmore's contributions to the history of Florida's bands was his efforts to attract some of the best teachers in the nation to come to Florida. Perhaps his most important recruit was Otto J. Kreshauer, 
who was working for the C.G. Khan Company, when Fillmore enticed him into coming to a nice little town in Central Florida that was looking for a band director. Prior to joining the Khan Company, he had been a very successful music educator in Wisconsin, was a former member of the Sousa Band, and it had been named one of America's ten top school bandmasters by the School Musician magazine. In August of 1941, Kroshauer accepted the position at Lake Wales High School, bringing with him a wealth of knowledge and experience that would impact many other band directors throughout the state. The United States' involvement in World War II presented several challenges for the band programs and their leaders. Through determined efforts to keep bands in the schools, and with the inspired leadership of Henry Fillmore, Fred McCall, and others, school bands remained active and vital to the war effort. During these challenging times, three remarkable incidents kept band programs alive. The first of these events was the adoption of the inspection system for adjudicating bands. Travel restrictions imposed by the government prohibited transportation of large groups of people for anything but essential military travel. School bands were not allowed to travel long distances for performances or festivals. The 1942 FBA State Festival, which was scheduled for DeLand, was canceled due to these conditions. This led to the inspection concept of having the judges travel to individual schools or central locations to evaluate band performances. The Northwest District of the FBA was able to hold its 1942 contest in Tallahassee due to the close proximity of the schools. Inspections substituted for the State Band Festival in 1943, 44, and 1945. Adjudicators were experienced members of FBA who would make their own travel arrangements to visit schools in their assigned areas. Marching was omitted from the inspection system, and soul and ensembles were judged by their own band directors. Certificates were presented in lieu of the traditional solo and ensemble medals. The 1943 inspections marked the first time that FBA members would judge bands from their own state. This caused some directors to criticize the equity of the process. P.J. Gustat addressed this issue early in 1943. I wonder if the directors of the bands being inspected appreciate the arduous and may I say thankless task of the judges especially when they justly dote out second and third divisions to bands who have made higher ratings in other years. Have a heart and be good sports. The judges are from our own ranks. They are experienced men in the field of instrumental music. You may be sure that they have human frailties, but they are trustworthy and their decisions this year will be the cause of better bands next year. Adjudicators were paid $15 per band and were responsible for their own expenses. The executive committee decided that Henry Fillmore would judge the bands of the inspecting adjudicators. The following assignments were made for the first year of the inspection evaluations. The inspection format produced some unexpected benefits to the bands in Florida. Since most of the inspection performances were conducted during school assemblies, a larger audience was reached than in the normal festival situation. These performances provided further reinforcement for established bands and gave the younger performers additional support. The 1944 inspections followed the same format as in 1943, with the addition of limited festivals at Tallahassee, Leesburg, and St. Cloud. Marching was an option in the 1944 inspection evaluations. The last year of inspections was 1945. The second major event of the war period was the formation of the Florida Music Educators Association. This occurred as a result of a combined music clinic and concert staged by the Florida Vocal Association, the Florida Orchestra Association, and the Florida Bandmasters Association. The organizational meeting of the FMEA took place on November 21, 1944 in Tampa. Otto J. Kreshauer was elected the first president of the FMEA. 
The new association received strong support from the State Department of Education, due in part to its realization that music was an important part of boosting morale of Florida citizens during the costly war period. The third major occurrence was the decision to divide the FBA into six districts. When travel restrictions were lifted following the war, FBA reinstated the state-level band festival. The 1946 festival was hosted by the Festival of States in St. Petersburg and had 43 bands participating. It was apparent that the festival had attracted so many bands that it was no longer feasible to schedule the entire festival in such a short period of time. A committee was appointed to devise a new system that would allow all of Florida's bands to participate in festival evaluations. The committee decided to divide the state into six districts. The plan included a district festival where bands that received a superior rating would proceed to the FBA State Festival. The members of each district would decide on the sites and dates for their festivals. Further, they would conduct their meetings, elect their officers, and finance their festivals under the auspices of the FBA. The Florida bands had survived the war, continuing to grow during a time when most of its leaders had served in the military. Despite the use of temporary directors, limited funding, and severe communication and travel problems, the leaders found solutions that were effective and laid the foundation for future progress. FBA leadership extended into its associated organizations. P.J. Gustat was the first Florida Vocal Association president. Al Wright became the Orchestra Association president during World War II, and Otto J. Kreschauer became the first president of FMEA. With the creation of the six FBA districts accomplished, the first FBA district festivals were held in 1947. It was customary for band festival organizers to negotiate with possible host cities for financial support which would help defray the cost of operating the festival. The usual amount sought was $1,000. This practice continued when the district festivals came into existence. In some cases, when the host site could not be contracted for the required amount, the attending bands would loan the festival the money so that the financial obligations could be met. They were then repaid out of the festival receipts. It is interesting to note that the first district festivals did not allow for marching band festivals to be held in the fall, but rather marching bands performed and were evaluated at the spring district festivals. In fact, bands were required to perform the marching, concert, and solo and ensemble portions of the district festivals. A pre-festival parade and a mass band performance were also included in the busy schedule of events at the district festivals. The creation of a district structure also required the FBA to put together a state festival adjudication list. The FBA leaders were insistent that the state adjudicators be of the highest caliber possible. The minutes of the December executive board meeting indicate that the following names were suggested. Henry Fillmore was selected as chairman of the judges because of his continued support and efforts on behalf of the Florida Bandmasters Association. It was also necessary for the executive board to create a district adjudicators list. The first FBA State Band Festival, held under the new district state structure, was held in Miami on April 24th, 25th, and 26th, 1947. During this same period, the FBA took a very proactive approach to supporting bands in the state. It was FBA policy that bands be compensated for travel expenses to all non-school performances and that no awards or contest placement designations could be presented to bands participating in these events. The minimum charge required by FBA was three quarters of a cent per mile per student for the first 150 miles and three eighths of a cent per mile per student for the next 250 miles. Bands that traveled more than 400 miles could negotiate their fees for additional compensation. The first challenge to these policies came from the Lake Worth Chamber of Commerce, which was sponsoring a Halloween parade. FBA members were advised not to participate in the parade unless the policies were accepted by the sponsors. The FBA held steady throughout the encounter, and in the end, the Chamber of Commerce agreed to the terms. The development of the district system in Florida had a very positive effect on the level of band performance in Florida. By 1949, the Florida bands which qualified for state festival were recognized as among the best in the nation. Comments from noted band conductors who served as adjudicators for the 1948 and 1949 festivals included these quotes. 
one of the finest high school band's events I have ever witnessed. Displaying to the highest degree their versatility in outdoor marching exhibitions and indoor concert playing, the band set an enviable standard of quality and balance. Mark Hinesley. It is in my personal opinion that Florida is leading the nation in the development of school bands. William D. Ravelli. With few exceptions, there were no programs in public schools offering instrumental music to African-American children in Florida prior to 1940. As a result, the historically black colleges in Florida had no feeder programs for the development of their bands. In 1941, Leander A. Kirksey and J. Harold Brown invited five recent graduates of the Florida A&M College Music Department to meet with them to discuss the need for band programs to be established in the public schools. The men who attended this meeting were George Hill, employed at Crims Academy in Sanford, Alvin Downing, employed at Gibbs High School in St. Petersburg, Raymond Shepard, employed at Booker T. Washington High School in Pensacola, Michael Rodriguez, employed at Booker T. Washington Junior High School in Tampa, and Guy Glover, employed at Dorsey High School in Miami. As a result of that meeting, the Florida Association of Band Directors was formed with the express purpose of creating school band programs in the schools which were serving African American students. These programs would in turn serve as feeder programs for Florida A&M College and the other historically black colleges in Florida. The association served its members from 1941 until 1966 when it merged with the Florida Bandmasters Association. Presidents who served that association were Leander Kirksey from 1941 to 1955, George H. Hill from 1955 to 1960, and James W. Wilson from 1960 to 1966. The growth of the bands in the historically black high schools in Florida was indicative of the work and influence of these early leaders. The Crooms Academy High School in Sanford was one of the first historically black schools to provide band opportunities for its students. This quote from the 1953 State Festival program provides a brief yet informative history of this pioneer program. The Crooms Academy High School Band was one of the first two black bands in the state. Principal J. N. Crooms was fortunate in securing one of the first two graduates in band music of the Florida A&M College in 1939. Professor George H. Hill thus became our band director September 11, 1939. Crooms Academy is proud of its record as a pioneer in band music. The first band director, Professor G. H. Hill, is now at Matthew W. Gilbert High School in Jacksonville, Florida, and one of our first band graduates. Professor James W. Wilson is the esteemed band director of Jones High School, Orlando, Florida. The FABD sponsored state band festivals separate from FBA festivals until the merger occurred. The FABD state festivals followed a similar format to the FBA events. The 1953 state festival held at Jones High School in Orlando, April 23rd through the 25th, included the following schedule. Adjudicators for the festival were Bill Allen, L. Allen Pike, William P. Foster, William Penn, Leander Kirksey, Timothy O. Savage, and George Hill. The FABD also sponsored an all-state concert band, which gave its students the opportunity to work with well-known clinicians from various parts of the country. The 1950s saw continued growth in the school band movement in Florida. Ever watchful for changes to improve, yet cautiously deliberate in actions, the Florida Bandmasters Association and the Florida Association of Band Directors addressed many important philosophical and quality issues during the 10-year period beginning in 1948. In-service training for band directors was a prime example of their desire to see their members improve their skills and musical knowledge. Under the guidance of Harold B. Bachman, the University of Florida offered a program whereby band directors could earn graduate credit by attending the state music clinic, including a work project which was submitted to the university after the clinic had concluded. Several hundred music teachers earned credits toward advanced degrees or toward certification renewal through this program. Florida A&M College held clinics and workshops for FABD members, and the FABD All-State Band Clinics provided additional opportunities for professional growth and development. In 1951, 
the Florida High School Activities Association was born, and as a result, the FBA was faced with its first real threat to its independence. Over the next several years, the FBA and the FHSAA struggled with conflicting purposes and philosophical goals. Many battles were waged by leaders of the FBA. Some were successful, while others were not. In the end, the FHSAA and the FBA settled in for a long period of somewhat peaceful coexistence. Also in 1951, the FBA reverted to a three rating system for the state festival, using only superior, excellent, and good ratings, while retaining the five rating system format for the district festivals. It was also in 1951 when the Continuing Music Committee instituted a system whereby they selected two required selections for each classification, from which each band was to pick and play one at festival. The other selection could come from the cumulative list, thus giving directors more freedom to select literature that was appropriate for their bands. In 1953, baton twirling events were added to the festival formats, and the first music list for solo and ensembles was published. Due to the continued growth of band programs in Florida, and the success of many of those programs, it became necessary in 1954 to divide the state festival into two regions, North and South. From 1951 until 1956, the classification of bands came under revision. By 1957, the classification system had emerged as follows. In 1958, the first marching band clinic was held at the University of Florida. This valuable in-service program provided Florida's band directors with an intense week of clinics, rehearsals, and hands-on experiences with a select group of high school marching band students. Well-known marching band experts from across the nation were brought in to serve as clinicians. This event eventually became known as the Florida All-Star Marching Band. The first clinician to be employed for the marching band clinic was Jack Lee, who is the director of bands at the University of Arizona. 100 students from 30 schools and 57 directors attended this inaugural session. The All-Star Marching Band Clinic continued in various locations until 1992, when financial conditions eventually caused its cancellation. By the end of the 1950s, bands in the public schools in Florida, both historically black schools and traditionally white schools, were thriving. Florida had developed a national reputation for quality band programs, dedicated leadership, and progressive music education. Much of this success was due to the vision, dedication, and tireless efforts of the pioneer leaders in our profession. The names of Brown Greeton Cole, P.J. Gustat, John Haney, Everett L. Bud Roberts, Major James B. O'Neill, Henry Fillmore, Otto Krushauer, Fred McCall, Colonel Harold B. Bachman, Leander Kirksey, George H. Hill, and others lay the foundation for our work today. We were both indebted and challenged by their legacies. The first 40 years of bands in the schools in Florida was rich with progress, challenges, and spectacular growth. The second 40 years, we saw even more challenges, more progress, and more dedicated leadership from the men and women who accomplish musical magic on a daily basis with the young people that they mold into accomplished musicians. Stay tuned for the story of the second 40 years. Listen!